Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to start a brand new chapter. This is kind of a fun chapter. We get to do some cool graphing on our graphers. We're going to review inverse and joint variation, and then we're going to write models using those variations. And remember, that means we're going to write equations, and then we're going to learn some new types of variation. So as we get started, we need to go back and review because we've actually talked about direct variation and inverse variation already. I had a little coffee break. So the basic equations is bad grammar, sorry, is y is equal to ax or kx. This particular book likes to use an a. I've always used a k in the past. So if I mix the two up, I just have a constant of variation. So a or k, in case I screw up, is going to be the constant of variation. And remember that that constant of variation, another word would be the slope, has to be the same for the entire line. So if I graphed it, if you'll remember from the deep dark recesses of your brain, direct variation goes through the origin and then the A represents a slope, okay? Um, if you'll also remember, we talked about inverse variation. And I'm actually going to backtrack for just a sec. I can find my constant by solving the equation for a, so a is going to equal y divided by x. Okay? I never actually remember this because if I know the basic equation, I can solve the equation for any variable I want. So I actually only remember the original equation. All right, my equation for inverse variation is y is equal to a over x. Okay, so again, a is the constant of variation, and then x is going to represent my data. I'm not going to show you the graph at this point. It's really cool, but that's what this whole chapter is going to be about. But I am going to show you that if I wanted to solve for a, I would cross multiply. a is going to get multiplied by 1, so I'm going to have that a is equal to xy. And I just like to put my variables in alphabetical order. All right. So I'm going to do a quick little example just to remind you of what these types of problems look like. So we might see something that says the variables x and y vary inversely and y is equal to 7 when x is equal to 4. And I want you to write an equation so sometimes you'll see the directions that say write a model. Model and equation mean the same thing that relates x and y. Okay, And then I want you to find y when x is equal to a negative 2. So the first part of this, that this equation, sorry, this set of words is important, is this one. It says that x and y vary inversely. So I'm going to write y is equal to a divided by x. Solve for a, and I get a is equal to x times y. Well, they told me what x and y are equal to, so I'm going to substitute those in. So I get a is equal to 4 times 7, which is 28. So this is my constant of variation. And so remember it says when you have to write a model, that means I need to see the finished model, so it's going to be 28 over x. Okay. So then the next part says then find y when x is a negative 2. So technically I want to do f of a negative 2, and that's going to equal 28 divided by a negative 2, and that's going to equal a negative 14. All right, and then that would be my solution. All right, okay, we have quite a bit of writing to do today since we're starting a new chapter, and we always have variables to represent. Or sorry, we always have a lot of definitions when we start a new chapter. All right, so our next example is going to say tell whether, that's a weird word, whether, direct variation inverse variation I'm going to scoop my coffee over so I don't spill it that would be a bummer or neither 
All right, so number one, you're going to have the equation 3x is equal to y. So I'm going to rearrange it, and I'm going to write it as y is equal to 3x, because when an equation looks like what we're used to seeing, we typically know what to do. Because y and x are on the same line, this is my constant of variation. This is then direct variation. Okay. My second problem is going to be xy is equal to 0 0.75. Again, the problem is really not in the form that we're used to seeing, so I'm going to divide both sides by x, and I'm going to get y is equal to 0 0.75 over x. The 0.75 becomes the constant of variation. My variable x is in the denominator. Therefore, this is going to be inverse variation. Okay, and then the last one is going to be y is equal to x minus 5. All right, this is a line whose y-intercept is a negative 5 and whose slope is 1. So if I had a negative 5, my line might do something like that. That's not direct variation, nor is it inverse variation because I don't have an x in the denominator. Okay, remember direct has to go exactly through the origin. Inverse variation is way cooler. I will show you how to do that soon. All right, so now I'm going to do a couple of examples. Okay, and actually I'm just going to write some words. If you're given a set of data and you're asked to write a model, okay, Oftentimes, they'll tell you what that model is. So they may, might say, write an inverse variation model to represent the data. S-E-N-T. Okay, and so I'm just going to show you a little example. I'm not going to kind of define what the variables are. I'm just going to give us some values. We'll get to word problems later. So let's say that my data was 58 over 448, and then I had 62 and 424, and then 66 and 392, and then, ooh, big column, 70 and 376. So notice they've told me what type of equation to use, but I don't know what A is. So I'm going to write my generic equation. It's going to be a over x. So I can find a by checking my data points. So a is going to be equal to x times y. What you do need to be careful with is to verify that the a is roughly the same for all of these. And this is actually kind of a weird example. I'm surprised the book used it because my answers don't end up to be exact. But I'll show you what I mean. So if I do a 1, and I'm going to do this first column, it's going to equal 58 times 448, and that would be 25,984. If I did the second column, I would get 62 times 424, and that would give me 26,288. So notice they're not exactly the same, but they both round to 26. I guess it helps if you can see it. If I do the third column, same procedure, 66 times 392, I'm going to get 25,872. Again, this rounds to 26. And the fourth column is going to be 70 times 376, and I'm going to get 26,320. So none of these numbers are identical, but they do all round to 26,000. And that's what the book is going to use. So they're going to say A is equal to 26,000. Therefore, my model is going to be 26,000 divided by x, okay? And that would be my solution. And then oftentimes they ask you to predict some behavior. Alrighty. So now what I'm going to do is show you some short phrases and then show you what the equation is because there are many types of variation. Actually, there's an infinite type, number of types of variation, and we're just going to see a few. So I'm just going to give you some examples. So the first one said, y varies inversely 
inversely always means it goes to the denominator as x, that equation would be y is equal to a over x. And then I would solve for a and do all of my other math. <clears throat> Let's say I have another one and it says z varies jointly with x, y, and r. Okay? Varies jointly means that all of the variables are going to be on the same line. So I'm going to have z is equal to a is my constant of variation, x, y, and r. Notice they're all multiplied together. The next one is going to say y varies inversely with the square of x, with the square of x. So they're actually fairly straightforward if you write as you read. So I'm going to write as I read, y varies inversely as the square of x. Okay. So anytime you have something that's varying, you're going to have a constant of variation. So you always want to make sure you put in your a or k. I don't kind of care what you call it. The next one would say z varies directly with y and inversely with x. And it sounds like there's a party going on outside my room. So I'm going to write as I read, z varies directly with y and inversely with x. Okay. The last one, I'm going to have x varies jointly with t and r and inversely with, ooh, I hate s's, s. That's an s, not a 5. Okay? So I'm going to write as I read, x varies jointly with T and R and inversely as S. So they're really not very difficult. Alrighty? Okay, so those are our examples, different types of variation. Alrighty? In all of these, you're usually going to be given enough information to solve for A, substitute that back into your equation, write the model, and then they, they often say predict when something else will happen, okay? All right, so we're actually kind of done. Let me give you your problem. So a nice, polite start to the next chapter, okay? All right, number, number one, the first couple say write an equation for the given relationship. Okay, so number one is going to say x varies directly with y and inversely as z. So all I want you to do is write the equation. The second, second one says y varies jointly with x and the square of z. Okay. All right, next problem, number three, says given x is equal to 5 when y equals a negative 4, write a model, which means you need to solve for a, to represent y varies inversely is x. y varies inversely as x. Okay? The next one. Given x is equal to 5 when y equals 3 and z equals 2. Oops, sorry, you can't see it. Okay, so given x is 5 and y equals 3 and z equals 2, write a model to represent. So again, you're going to have to solve for a and then write the model. y varies 
directly with x and inversely as the square root of x. Square root, oops, of, oh, z. Sorry, wrong variable. There we go. So given x is 5, y is 3, z is 2, write a model to represent y varies directly with x and inversely as the square root of z. Alrighty, nice short start to the new chapter, 15 minutes, yee-haw. Good luck with your problems and I'll see you tomorrow.